Yes. 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 Ooh. Yes. 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 Blessings to you from the Unicorn Collective. Greetings. Yes. It is nice to connect with you. Likewise, I would like to say that while I remember in the beginning that you have as a collective and individually permission to uh, yes. connect with my energy. Yes. As, as you see that it's energetically appropriate. Yes. The last time that Daniel challenged you a couple of months ago, there was um, there was a statement that I really latched on to that I liked and that was that play is serious business. <laughs> yes. I um I wondered if you could elaborate elaborate a little bit more on that idea and specifically energetically the uh, building a better energy conduit to that aspect of you that is non physical through this idea of play. Yeah. Well, no one has to force you to play. There doesn't need to be something that you gain from it. It does not need to result in something else, something better. And so you do it for the joy of doing whatever it is you are doing. And that puts you in that vibration of who you really are. Because who you really are is always seeking expression. And when you are in that state of play, when you are harmonizing with that energy of frivolity, joy, being completely present in the moment with what you are doing, that is how you tap into that core essence of who you really are. So you have many things in your lives that you need to do and other things that you think you need to do.
And when you place all of that on your plate and you leave a little bit of space for play, you have it backwards. You tend to plan too much for the future. You tend to think too much about security and stability and less and less about joy and frivolity as you get older and you have all of your responsibilities to make ends meet. So as a child, you are directed more purely by that desire to express yourself and to have fun and to make everything into play. That's what we are guiding you to reconnect with. Now you don't really need anyone to remind you to have fun because you are being prompted within to move towards that which is enjoyable to you. But you don't always listen to those impulses because they seem irresponsible. So we are suggesting that you let go of any beliefs that tell you that you are somehow not going to survive. That you are not going to thrive unless you put your nose to the grindstone. Instead, we encourage you to seek out experiences that puts you in touch with your true whole self. That what you really are. And to express that energy through playful activities. Things you enjoy. As you make time for that in your day, as you put your self in that playful state of being, you notice that you have more time than you thought. Things get done magically. Other things that you thought you needed to do, turns out you didn't. So it's about living in joy, seeking more joy in your life, and letting go of fear, fears that tell you that you are not going to make it unless you do X, Y, and Z by a certain time frame. So it's a part of your journey to surrender. and to give in to those playful activities that are always calling you. Always beckoning you forth to be more of who you are. And that's more of the energy of your true and natural self, that that playful, childlike type of energy and uh, shifting 
paradigms from a third density type of idea to more of a fifth dimensional in a, integrating the idea that you're an immortal being in a timeless reality playing a great game with a whole bunch of your friends and uh, yeah. al- allowing yourself a little bit more playfulness to unfold. Yes, indeed. By looking for opportunities to express who you really are joyously, you put yourselves right there into that fourth density frequency state. And then you don't have to wait for anything else to happen in order to enjoy the experience of being a creator being being one who chooses reality that's what you are here to do that's what we and others are here to remind you to do put your focus back on what is in your core and is beckoning you forth. Breadcrumbs, so to speak. Say again. Breadcrumbs, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, an energetic breadcrumbs, so to speak. A little subtle positioning. Now, I found much joy and love, and I would define also something as unconditional love this uh this core frequency kind of what you might call bleeding back through when i play with the idea of anything that happens in any normal day coming across any other entity any other energy uh, in the physical reality that um that i am playing a great game with them and that that was the timing that we wanted to experience within the physical construct and that there is more of each of us there and try to allow more energetic exchange i find as i've been toying with that idea over the some months now that uh, i have a lot more of that energy that core energy starting to come through when i play with that idea so that's the play one of the playful ideas that i've been toying around with as a permission slip. Very good. Yes. Very now much. Perfect. It is a very exciting way to explore who you really are without any agenda. Mm. So when you take a playful approach to your spirituality, it's not as though you're trying to get somewhere else. It's not as though you feel you need to do this in order to get to the next level or in order to prove to yourself or anyone else that you're a spiritual being. But instead, you play with these concepts and you play with these energies and you demonstrate to yourself that this ascension business can be fun. Yeah. Yeah, the idea of play, I, I, I dare say that it is um, that it is infectious, this idea of play and this um, playful type of energy and spirit. And, and I've seen it when I'm around others, and there's still others in the old paradigm that, you know, that just don't understand and or feel threatened or what have you by this, or, or feel that it might be irresponsible to be that happy. I'm not quite sure, but... Um, I'm finding less and less of them in my experiences, and I would should imagine that's because I've been magnetized more to parallel realities that have entities that are more playful. Yes. You certainly do get to choose which entities you are connecting with by choosing which energies you feel most attracted to and following those breadcrumbs. I've been doing a a mental exercise or like a a playful meditation for some time now with um, every time I feel connected to any particular 
grouping such as yourself and or a particular individuated entity, for instance, like um, Bashar or Kiriyoki or Trev and a number of different entities, and I hold them in my thoughts during the course of the day and send them, uh, especially when I have this heightened sensation of what I could be called unconditional love, uh, the core vibration. Uh, in those particular instances, especially, I try to reconnect. And I find a lot of, uh, like, a, an, a feedback effect where there's even more unconditional love that, that's fed back on some occasions. For instance, when uh, the Unicorn Collective came through, there was, uh, uh, for a short time there, maybe like 30 seconds, there was a heightened sense of unconditional love coming through. Mm. Yeah. And I find if I try to amplify that frequency intentionally during those courses, it, it effectively gets lost in the the trying. And if I just hold it yeah. as an idea and just uh, stay with it, then it actually seems to amplify and stay longer and being able to be held longer. So it's, um, I guess the word effortlessness, you know, effortless is probably the best definition in those situations is just to be more playful and enjoy it. Yes. Heightening it certainly didn't do any good. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's lost for longer periods of time because you're trying to uh, structure, put structure around something that yeah. is an aspect of you. Yes, as you allow experiences to unfold and to happen organically and naturally you find that you can create the experience of them that you want to have without then needing to take over and control the entire experience. And so that's what you're recognizing here is that as you move towards that which you feel attracted to, that which resonates with you, you automatically get that energetic surge through your connection with that which is of a high frequency, but then you don't have to take over and start turning the knobs and cranking the gears in order for it to continue to evolve in the way that it is meant to evolve. You see. And these energetic connections that I feel could be oversoul connections, they could be other simultaneous lifetimes that I've uh, played with those other entities and concurrently as another expression in another lifetime from the oversoul level. So there could be numerable connections when making these types of ideas or with feeling these other types of energetic connections other dimensions, you know, probably even expressions that the human mind can't even imagine at this point in time. Yes, ultimately what you want to recognize is that you're connecting with more of yourself. As all that is. Yes. It is a. It was for a, a while a um, very lofty concept, uh, a concept that's hard to hold in the forefront of your consciousness until you've held it for a while to to think that that you are every fractal and that each is also individuated and independent. Yes. And still exist as all that is. Just having different adventures from different frequency points of view. So that yeah. it could have the one thing, the only way one thing could have numerable experiences is to differentiate itself into fractal mm -hmm. consciousness. Precisely, yes. Yes. Now, what density state does the Unicorn Collective exist on? We are coming to you from fourth density. So you have physical expressions. When we want to. As energy. Okay. Yes. So you transition back and forth as it's fun to do so. Yes. Do you reside in a particular area that we could um, 
quantify as like a, a part of the galaxy. But we like to spread ourselves around, mm. you see. So we like to visit yeah. different parts of the galaxy as we feel attracted to those particular places. We did explore planet Earth quite some time ago. And we found that we were ready for a new experience. And so we shifted out of third density. So how in and the concept called time that I can understand is there a timing for that as far as when you were incarnated in the third dimensional earth? From around 10 million years ago till around 5 million years ago. Now, are you nearing uh, your next density state? Are you, yes. in, a, in a sense, it seems that the timing for humanity and others that energetically were lending a lot of ability for others to uplift into their next density state because of energetic connections and just yeah. timing. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting the sense in other conversations and other channelings that I've heard almost all of them are going into their next density. Whatever density state they're in now, they're going into their next density. Yes, precisely. We are going to shift to the fifth density. And that's something that's occurring now? Yes. And what is that like, to have that type of transition? Expansion. It's like spreading out, yes. It's lighter, freer. Now, did you have spaceships in fourth density? Is that how you traveled? Or did you just by, are you in a state where you just travel by will from one bio, bio location yes. to another? Yes, yes. Teleportation, yes. Was there spaceships in the beginning of the fourth density state or was it by, by location? It was not our desire to have a spaceship. So we did not choose that particular way of moving around. More freedom and just the ability to go where you want when you want to go. Yeah. Like that idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no baggage, so to speak. Don't have to worry about you part where you parked your spaceship, <laughs> so to speak. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just as an idea, you know, I think D Daniel and I, before this conversation, were... Uh, speaking on being lighter and having less responsibility, so to speak. Um, so I think it's likened to that idea, just one less thing to have and to hold in your consciousness and to have more time for play as an idea. Yes, it really depends upon what type of experience you want to have and what type of travel you prefer. And so we prefer the immediacy of the teleportation. Mm. Well, yeah. Now these, these preferences as a collective or individuatedly, how much do they interrelate with other simultaneous lifetimes? As if, for instance, if I've... Uh, the last time I, I posed this question, I was told I had 700 and something incarnations within the Earth experience, within, I think, third and fourth density state, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And um, I would imagine, you know, many, 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 uh, so numerable that the human consciousness couldn't hold as an infinite being, like how many other multiple simultaneous incarnations. So if I've had 
X amount of coronations as an example that have had spaceships, then maybe in a different incarnation since that's all available as the one thing that, that might not be as fun of as an expression. So these energetic connections that you're making constantly, how do they play within the preference of the, the theme that the entity is playing out within the density state? For instance, as you as a collective, you played other density states out and you might have played out these ideas where you had physical vehicles. How does that play into those types of decisions? Physical vehicles like spaceships? Yes, or, you know, any other types of ideas that might have been expressed in other lifetimes. Uh, do they weigh into unique individual lifetimes because they have been played out as Yes. Expressions in other lifetimes. You know, for instance, I might yeah. have played out an expression with a, another unique individuated consciousness in this lifetime. So maybe we don't want to play out a, uh, a sexual relationship or a marriage or something like that because we might have done so in many occasions. Now being more conscious yeah. of that has... I'm not consciously aware of that because that would probably make it more difficult to have a unique individuated experience yes. but I am now yes. consciously aware that that actually is and has and is simultaneously happening. So I'm just curious how those define the unique consciousness that is aware of itself in this lifetime, as like myself, for instance, and my preferences. Are you, as a collective, does that play in? Are you aware of those? Or are they just energetically leaking through or if that makes any sense yes it does we are aware now now that we have reached this level of our evolution we are aware of other incarnations and experiences and how they do affect the preferences that we have now. So we do recognize when something has already been experienced on numerous occasions and how that affects what it is that we desire in this incarnation. It's like when you are eating a meal and you have several things on your plate and you eat enough of one of the choices on the plate to feel satisfied with that experience but then you have something else on your plate that interests you and that you want to enjoy and so you reach for that particular food item instead of continuing to eat more of the same. You just feel done. And now you're more consciously aware of why that decision is being made because you have more access consciously to other simultaneous yes. How yes. many, is there, can you define a number of how many are in the collective? We would give the number of 6.2 million and always expanding. Is there appropriation? Is there still like energetic encounters to make other unicorns? Or how does that work at this particular stage? We are joined by more individuated consciousnesses who are interested in the expression of self as unicorn. But it's not in the same way that life is born into your reality. It's more of a choice by the consciousness to join us. If I'm not mistaken, on the uh, to be able to be, especially within the new energy now and this new density state, to be able to incarnate on Earth, you have, in the way that we could understand it, a sort of interview process. Is there something like that for the type of energy that might want to join the collective? 
like that, to be sit in front of the Unicorn Collective and have a chat and say, I'd like to incarnate in this, within your density state and have this type of experience? Or how, how does that actually work to be able to like get into the collective, so to speak? There is no such process as that. It's either a match to our energy or it is not. And no one could join us if they were not a vibrational match to who and what we are and what we experience as an expression of energy. So they might not even be aware of you if they weren't an energetic match as, a, as an example. Yes. There wouldn't even be a choice at that point in time because this wouldn't be an example. Yes. Yes. I'm curious as to... Um, one of the other channelings that had come through via Daniel's uh, ladybugs were the expression, or it seemed like a uh, one of the choices, like a, a fun choice as an expression within the Earth's physical reality. And I remember when I was a kid, we had horses at the stable, and uh, next to the arena there was these little bushes that would bloom every once in a while. And there was... Um, an untold amount of ladybugs that I went and would go and catch and play with and, and run around. And I, I specifically remember that it was very joyous. And I would say it numbered in like the hundreds, probably in the thousands at some point in time. Um, so that's just another way, another expression for energies to play uh, is to physically manifest as other types of energies within the earth pain to have a different experience of each other. But why ladybugs? <laughs> what was the what was the the sense of fun as a ladybug? And are there other expressions besides ladybugs that are expressed by the Unicorn Collective within the Earth reality? Yes. Well, you have the rhinoceros, for instance, and that is. one of our expressions. You have the dragonfly as well. And yes, the ladybug. As soon as you come in contact with the ladybug, you feel the joy of that expression. You feel us. You feel the heart center of our collective being represented in the physical reality that you know of on your earthly plane. And you recognize that our energy never really left the earthly plane, even though our expression has mostly moved on. So there's still a energetic presence in the yes. earth vibration. Yeah. Indeed. We're with you all and we are assisting in the ascension process because we know what it's like. There is a um, a lot of breadcrumbs out there, and there's one in particular uh, in the in the beginning when I first came across some channeled information, and it was suggested that there was a lot more of myself than um, than I, that meets the eye, so to speak. There was um, an an exercise to build an energetic bridge between this 3D reality and like a fifth density, like a first contact type of idea where you would um, imagine the eyes as a, for instance, of the entity that you would be making for first contact yeah. with. And there was, I, I tried those exercises for a while. This is a number of years ago, maybe like 2013. And it was suggested by um, Bashar. 
And, you know, the ego is fighting and going back and forth. And there was a time where I'm like, well, you know, if I am an immortal being in a timeless reality and I am playing a great game with a whole bunch of my friends, I'd like to give myself um, some kind of breadcrumb, some kind of marker, show, you know, show me something that would be a little bit more tangible than the materials that I've seen. And I saw a video that basically matched exactly in my imagination the entity that I would have first contact with. And it was a fractal image that was um, from the Great Pyramid of Giza above the Queen's Chamber that was in a hidden chamber, like one of the first doors in the hidden chamber. And it's also a star map. And I use that on many occasions as a meditation and just put it on a flat screen TV and it changes and more stars or more like dots of energy seem to show up and some leave and change. Um, what exactly, it, it actually feels like a different, almost like a physical presence sometimes when I'm using my, it feels like the space is reorientating around me as I use that image more and more. I have it in front of me right now, so energetically you can connect with it if you like. Yeah. And it's one of those... Exactly. Yes? Oh, please, go right ahead. It's one of those expressions and one of those experiences that you can use to create whatever story you want to create around it. It's one of those things where you tap into the frequency of that expression and then you can utilize it to create whatever connections you want to create through it. So it is a sort of touchstone, a sort of energetic portal for you. to reach into and through to find yourself in whatever experience you want to create. So it doesn't have one singular meaning to you or for you. It's more of a universal expression of that which you would call connection to other beings. And as you utilize it appropriately, which you have been, it gains in its significance and in its power to you and that's why you see more when you look at it. Because you're shifting your perception of what it is and what it can be to you. So you can feed it with the energy and intention that's basically fun and playful for yourself, basically. It's a, it's a permission slip, like a touchstone to be able to yes. use as a transitional type of item. Yes, yes indeed. It's been a lot more prevalent in my consciousness without actually using it as of recent where I feel like a uh, there was a suggestion that there's a particular frequency that is um, energetically appropriate enough that would be conducive for first contact in that it wouldn't harm the unique individuated consciousness of the, of the, of the person that would be enough of a medium between the two energies where it would be a satisfactory bridge. And I've been feeling that that is um, some of these new feelings that I'm getting feel a lot more appropriate to that idea. Yes. Well, you can utilize it in whatever way that you see fit and you're going to find that you integrate it as you do. You become it. It becomes you and there's no separation, and then you don't need it anymore because you recognize that it's a part of you and that you access it within yourself. Yeah, I put it there and I made it on some level, so yeah. there's, there's, there's no distinction between those. 
So as you go through your different density states um, and entities get to like a, um, a fixed density state and they start to make uh, a transition either collectively or individuatedly back into what would be more of a spirit level, um, something that wouldn't be have any physical properties. There is there's this membrane between sixth and seventh density that gets transitioned into. Does, does that on some occasions make a new oversoul, or how does that, are you transitioning back into the same oversoul or into another soul group when that does happen, or how does that, I mean, it, it might be unique to each situation, but I, I'm just kind of curious how that, for instance, like once the collective gets to a high six density state and decides to go back as a collective in the spirit, does it go, exist as an oversoul, or does it return to the oversoul as a collective, and uh, does it make like a new individuated oversoul? I mean, that's, I'm interested in that idea. Well, we will tell you when we get there, because okay. we're not there yet. So it will be a fun experience for us to explore and to see what actually happens. That is the whole point, isn't it, is to actually have unique individuated experiences. Yeah, the fact that you can imagine all these different scenarios now where you are not anywhere near that experience should clue you in to whether or not it's real or possible. The fact that it can be imagined within the internet. Yeah. 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 So if that is an exciting idea to me, then that could quite potentially and even more probably because it is focused upon be a parallel reality that I would experience within those types of density states. I would I would be part of a collective that would make that transition and maybe even become a new oversoul. Um, I know the idea of uh, that's been expressed and toyed around with a little bit by different entities is... Um, this idea of the seventh hybrid brace that yes. is difficult for the human consciousness to kind of have a full grasp on within the density state that we reside in now. But my speculation was that it basically would be a simultaneous density experience between first density and seventh density where you would have like a unified experience of existence and you would experience all density states simultaneously yes. within physical and non-physical. Yes. yes. Yes, we like that explanation. We look forward to that experience ourselves. I should think that the Unicorn Collective would be part of that. Um, I, I would imagine there would be a lot of different collectives that would be joining. It wouldn't just be the hybrids that are there now along with humanity. I should think that there would be quite a few that would join and that would be welcomed. Well, you are playing a very unique game. And your human collective is still working out the details mm. of how to operate in the fourth density so nothing is set in stone nothing is absolute in terms of what will occur but the intention to be within the collective and holding that idea of that parallel reality since it all does potentially exist yes then the probability is much higher as for me individuatedly to experience that I, from what I yes. gather as a full. But it's all potentially, and we could just as easily and not very probably still, you know, start throwing bombs and blowing things up quite, quite potentially, you know, as a probability, but it's not quite as probable now because more of us and more of us and more of us are going more toward a higher density and holding more light as time goes yes. on. Yes, you're not going to blow each other up. <laughs> yes. Now we've uh, 
seemingly have grown past that at this point in time. Yeah. That was, I was told that there needed to be some kind of marker, like the idea of 2012 as a transition, just to have some kind of benchmark within physical reality so that it wouldn't draw itself out forever as, a, as an idea. Yes, nothing is forever. Nothing is always the same. And that is part of the joy of the journey for you is to have new experiences and to shift and change and to create new realities to explore. And that's exactly what you're doing as an individual and as a collective. And due to these unique conversations between unique individuated consciousnesses and collectives such as yourself, then there's more expressions and more ideas and more potentials and more things to explore because of these unique individuated infinite amount of consciousnesses that grow out of these ideas. Yes, it's like we connect with you and we create there to be a more powerful energy cord that connects us to humanity. You see? It gives us strength. It is like when you talk about a worldwide web of networks with your computers. Mm -hmm. If you imagine that this connection is creating another string or cord in the web. That is a very accurate way of looking at it so that all the different connections that occur add to the overall picture of consciousness connecting back to itself and inching ever closer to oneness. So this idea of exploring the darkness and then being aware of the light is truly a unique individuated experience as an individual and a whole, as a collective as in the Earth Collective. I, you were saying that there's still a lot of proverbial conversations going on as to figure yes. out what to do. It's because it's not seemingly been done before. It cannot be done before. It can only be done in the now. Because there is only now. Yes. So basically a, a new experience within creation that can be shared that potentially anything is possible if you can go into the darkness and come into the light and survive that process, so to speak, uh, in the physical plane. Yes, you're moving past survival now. You're moving into a mode of recognizing your eternal and infinite nature where then survival doesn't even become a thought that crosses your mind. You see? And once you have that out of the way, you can do some real creating. I've been moving in that direction. I have a lot of um, personal projects, documentaries, short films, and whatnot, and I've put all of my ideas finally into one place within the World Wide Web, within uh, a website and production company, as uh, all of my creative ideas to allow others to come and co-create through uh, a fair trade type of idea through a crowdfunding mechanism. And I found that quite exciting and I have to say that I think it's it's as done as it, it should as it's going to be for the time being and it's ready for others to come and have some co creation. So I've been moving more and more. It's it's interesting to switch between the paradigm um, as a unique experience of noticing that it is 
almost ridiculous when you have some fear that it's well. What are you for? If you now exist, the if you exist now, then you always have existed, and you always will exist. You're timeless. Then what fear is there if there's nothing? If there is non, if there is no such thing as non-existence, then and that seems to come up a lot more for me at this point in time. Where if something seems to be bothersome or worrisome, then to explore that idea seems to make it nonsensical or it just evaporates, as you were explaining. Yes. As you recognize that there is no way for you to enter into the state of non-existence, that expands your consciousness beyond the physical and gives you more of an energetic experience of yourself and of life and that opens you up to more possibilities. So those who are simply focusing on the physical and how to get ahead and how to earn enough money to survive or have enough for retirement are not truly allowing themselves to be expressed as energetic beings of light and love. And that's what you're shifting into, is that knowing. So that there is no more fear around whether or not you're going to make it. It becomes, as you said before, it, would, it, it doesn't even start to resonate as a thought because it, it's just it's ridiculous as an idea from, yeah. that, from that point of view. It doesn't yeah. matter what happens. Yeah. I will say that is a um, unique idea to be able to forget that you are immortal and to come and have the sense of not existing or the idea. I've even, as of recent, um, have gone to watch some more contemporary movies that have come out this summer and even having more of a harder, or the stories and the narratives are, are very interesting, but to, I, I don't energetically seem to connect with these ideas of fear and that, you know, maybe the enemy is coming or whatnot. So it almost was more of an exciting idea that knowing that they were playing that game. Yeah. Um, very, it's a very, very much, it's a, as you were saying, it is a different energy. So you're reaching in and you're accessing more of who you are just by consciously being aware of that. Yes. So you're expanding out your consciousness more into a fourth density state. Yes. Always. Expansion always happens. It's always part of existence. It's just a question of how you flow with the expansion, whether you fight it and resist it or whether you embrace it and accept it and ride the wave of it in joy and ecstasy towards what is inevitable. Kicking or screaming or in great joy, basically. Take your yeah. Your <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, this idea of this particular frequency of first contact, I've heard of this idea introduced in a live channeling from uh, Daryl Anka for Bashar and it was a specific frequency. I'm not sure how it was represented, if it was in Hertz or kilohertz or whatnot, I think it was right around 200,000 was the medium of being able to be conducive to have the idea of first contact so that you wouldn't be harmed by the idea of proximity of a higher density state being in physical proximity. I was curious if you have any measurement as um, some of these things experiences of unconditional love, my true vibration of being coming back through. If you have any measurement, excuse me, any measurement as to where I might have been here and there is in the way of frequency, if you have the ability to sense that. Well, we are not 
scientists, so we are not going to be able to give you numbers, but we can sense within you that there is much that you have experienced that will benefit you as you move forward into the fourth density experience of yourself and that when you do awaken to more of who you are, you're going to discover that there is no limit to what you can do and what you can experience. It's not as though numbers or even densities have any control over you and what it is that you want to experience and express. So these ways of measuring things are helpful to a certain extent. They are appealing to the mind, but the heart knows how much depth there is within you and as you feel for it instead of thinking about it you notice that there's depth beyond the depth beyond the depth and it keeps going and going and going and you would not want to stop it even if you could So this idea of measurement is the same as our very first part of our conversation of trying to reach for more when you have that feeling that you're interfering with it. It's uh, basically getting more within the idea, just enjoying the experience and allowing it to magnify in an organic manner. Yes. Quantifying things in that way is meant to give you a reference point, but it's so much easier for you to feel for those reference points and to give yourself the experience of it energetically rather than mathematically. That has been a lot more enjoyable, I will say. I've been reaching more for Mm -hmm. the frequency of it. It's a lot more enjoyable and I'm curious there's been a couple occasions where it has spiked to a level where it's um, at the time was not able to be held I had to sit and breathe because it was and then in more recent in the last couple months that type of magnification was able to be held and was comfortable so you can if you want some kind of measurement for the brain since it is just a construct that it does like to uh, have those types of measurements so I'll, I'll allow how much fun I have and how much energy I receive to be my measurement from here on out yes yes that's an excellent plan now do I have I know Daniel has something um, that he needs to tend to so I have one last question if I may yes um, Do I have, I get the sense that I have an expression within the Unicorn Collective. It's why I feel so drawn to ask these questions. Yes, indeed, you do. Now, that was also an expression within the third density state all that time ago in my sense of time? Yes, you existed on planet Earth in that unicorn form that you see depicted in your images, in your drawings and paintings and so on. Yes. That I'm surrounded by all the time because I have people that collect unicorns and they're everywhere. (laughs) Yes. Yes, reminders of what is part of you and always will be. And it fills me with great joy to know that I put them there because there's nothing within my experience that hasn't been agreed upon on some level energetically in the physical reality. I put them there as little roadmaps for myself. Besides the Unicorn Collective and other entities, we, we try to, I would imagine, energetically leave breadcrumbs to activate codons and um, 
other energetic ideas as to revive other vibrations. Yes, so that you can know yourself more fully as who you really are, which is all that is. I feel much closer in the idea of being aware of spirit level. Yes. Uh, like being more and more like consciously aware of the, it, at the very least, um, On the, energy, on the energy states, like they're in the sixth density state in the human construct for, would be, rather than the oversoul level, to be more of the, um, the fifth density state aware of, of um, the unique entity that is there as a, um, someone on the mountaintop to energetically be non-physical to help as a guide, I feel much more connected. But I, I feel soon that there might be a, a, an immense amount of integration on all energy states between the soul level on down. Yes, well, you don't need to wait for that experience. You get to have that experience now as you tap into it, as you talk about it even. You activate it within yourself and you become it. So this conscious awareness is activation and yes. the idea of all the way down to the, up to the sixth density state. Yes. And beyond. Yes. Very good. Well, thank you very much for joining me and um, the shared energy of me wanting to bring you forth and Daniel channeling you and having the desire to do so energetically cords you even more into the earth experience. I invite yes. you at any point in time to join in my energy. Indeed. Come play with us anytime. Blessings to you from the Unicorn Collective. Yes. <laughs>